Hello there Aquarius, so welcome. I hope this video finds you well and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, first of all, this is a little bit of a meditative um, type of a read, okay? It's going to touch on a very long time span in your life. And so when I said uh, meditative read, it's going to touch on many, many deep rooted subjects and, and, and ideas and themes that you've been grappling with for quite some time. As you all know, um, the month of March 2020 is a, uh, there's a Mercury retrograde period. And I feel like this Mercury retrograde period is um, forcing you to reflect on and think back on many, many important events that have transpired in your life. Um, a lot of the decisions that you've made within the past few years. And I feel that you are coming to terms with those decisions. You are coming ter to terms with the things that have happened in the past, how I, I guess like how events unfolded and how you yourself have either um, let events unfold or have been a catalyst for which events have happened in your life. Okay, so it's a very, very meditative read. And it is also um, a lot about, you know, thinking about the past and trying to come to terms with and, and kind of reconcile with your own past and the decisions that you've made in the past, okay? Um, I feel like it can be a little bit of a heavy read. So I, if you are watching this, I want you to bear with me. And um, I feel like a lot of things are coming up in this thread. So it might take me a little bit of, uh, of time to, you know, find the right way to transition between one subject to the next, okay? So first of all, when I was shuffling out the spread, um, I saw a a pond and the pond I'm seeing like it's um you know th there's a lot of mud okay it, it's made of murky murky uh, water okay so the water itself it's like uh, brown and brackish and it's not very very pleasant it's not clean and clear and pleasant to look at and and you know aesthetically pleasing to the eye and um, I see a bunch of uh, lily pads in the water and at the center of this pond, there is a white lotus, like a, a white, either a, a lotus flower or a lily. Um, I feel like it's more of a lotus flower. It's, it's big and the lily pads themselves are really big. And uh, the lotus flower is uh, blooming and it's in the middle of this pond, okay? And so when I saw this, immediately I was thinking, you know, hardship uh, brings about, um, like hardships build character is the the first image that comes to mind and uh, the other message that came through as well is i feel like you know in the most dire situation or in the most dire circumstance something good can be built out of it okay so i, I feel like it's a renewal regeneration and it's a um, message that screams out to me like meditative peace okay um finding that I, I feel like whatever it is that you're going through for the month of march 2020 you're finally coming to terms with that you're finally accepting that and in the process of doing so you're able to find a lot of peace and, and to to be able to be at peace within yourself okay it is a very rare thing for an Aquarius person to kind of like sit in peace because, you know, your mind races, right? You always uh, ruminate and wonder about the past and you always uh, walk down memory lane in your own mind and in your own thoughts. And I feel like for you to finally reach this state where you feel at peace, it's uh, taken a long time and it was a, a very difficult road, but I feel like this is pretty much bringing about that meditative peace that I'm seeing here. So um, let me talk about a few things, okay? So I feel like the cards are split up like this, two at a time. That's what it feels like to me. So let me talk about the way the energies are playing out in these cards. So first of all, um, I do see you looking back at your past, okay? There were situations where I feel like this impulsiveness to get things done, to be decisive, 
to uh, move ideas and, and, and act on ideas. It, it's like moving things from the realm of ideas to the realm of the real world. So like acting on your ideas, bringing your ideas forth into the world. Uh, see what floats and see what sinks, okay? And so I feel like there might have been a, an impulsiveness about you or like um, uh, wanting very badly to move on ahead despite not knowing all the information, okay? And I feel like for many of you, this is like, you know, a, a combination of things that happened within the last five years. And I feel like the, the five year mark was quite important for many of you because um, that was when you felt like your life really accelerated, okay? That was when you felt like a lot of decisions, important decisions have to be made in your home, in your love life, in your um, financial situation, and especially in your professional life. And so I feel like you had to be quick on the uptake. You had to grab life by the horns. You had to really go out there and put yourself out there to find opportunities and you know pretty much grabbing opportunities as they come in and i feel like in the process of grabbing these opportunities you didn't know whether or not something was going to be a good fit you didn't know how things were going to transpire a few years down the line and i feel like for many of you uh you acted on pure instinct okay it's just kind of like what do i want in this moment in time and i, I felt like whatever it was you went for it and uh, I feel like there might have been some, you know, unintended consequences as a result of it, okay? Some of you might have rushed into situations, especially like uh, with people, relationships, and, and, and things like that, where you didn't know all the information, you didn't know what it entailed, you didn't know the other person too well, okay? And what's really bringing that uh, to me? bringing home that message to me here is we have the eight of swords and the eight of swords is pretty much like this burn blindfolded not having all the information at your disposal not knowing what's around the corner not knowing how the paths are gonna um, be played out or uh, are going to unfurl ahead of you and not knowing what the future is going to bring and we have the ace of swords and this is pretty much you know acting on or making a decision when we don't have full access to all the information okay when we don't have um, the full knowledge when we don't have the full disclosure so i feel like for the past five years many of you were in this state where you felt like very passionately guided towards something either a career change either a relationship and i'm seeing a lot of you mesmerized or even um taken in um by a relationship partner who was very exciting uh who is very exotic possibly somebody who's very different from you like culturally ethnically linguistically i feel a sense of somebody who hails from a foreign land or somebody who is just you know very very different from you when it comes to the upbringing and the way in which they come into your life here with the knight of wands this is someone is who, who's just uh, very passionate who stirs your passion and who brings about you know a new way of doing a new way of thinking a paradigm shift in in your life for many of you and i feel like in a way they're very very different from you and that makes them quite interesting and as a result of it i feel like for many of you you dove into a situation um quickly and you didn't think about you know all the um consequences you and and I, I feel like for many of you um this was a situation where i am sensing that this person might have been very in and out of your life okay they you know the with the knight of wands energy they're not the most stable people uh they're very cool, fun and exciting but they're kind of here today gone tomorrow they're not somebody that will be there when things get rough they're not going to stick around when you know when you need them they're not going to be there with a, a shoulder to lean on when you have a bad day or when things are not going your way when you need to vent when you need that emotional reassurance this is pretty much not the right person that's going to be around to do that and i feel as if whatever the dynamics of this relationship is uh, i'm sensing that it's lacking in soul and it's lacking in passion
And I also feel like even though some of you could be in a relationship with this person, might have been in a relationship with, with this person, the dynamics of the relationship was very much like you felt alone. You felt like they didn't understand you, and you felt like there were times where you need you needed that emotional connection or that emotional reassurance or that emotional understanding from the other person. You wanted that, and you needed that. But for whatever reason, they were not there. They were not available, and I feel like for many of you,、uh, they might not have made made themselves available. Okay, and I feel like what it boils down to is Aquarius.、Um, you pride yourself on being very independent and very、um, self sufficient, right? And I also feel like you are not a type of person. Where you need emotional reassurance, where you need reassurance, you need affirmation, you need the positive feedback. You're not that tight because you know. Once again, this is a card about decisiveness. This is a card about relying on what we know to make decision. Okay, Ace of Swords. Um, making the executive decisions without needing to consult anybody. So this is pretty much your energy as you walk through life. You know where you stand. You know how you feel. You know what you think, and you know what you believe in. And as a result of that, you have always been the one to make executive decisions without needing to bounce ideas off another person, or without even needing to、um, another person to to kind of like tell you you're on the right path. And because you have been always very independent, this is your card, the star. I feel like the other person kind of took that for granted. They they kind of、uh, felt like, oh, Aquarius doesn't really need me.、Uh, the Aquarius doesn't need my、um, my affirmation, or they they don't need my reassurance, or they don't really need me. And so I feel like in this situation, it's sort of like two people who are. Very independent, wanting to do their own things, and in a relationship, it might have been very difficult for these two people to work together. So the the energy and the dynamics between you and this person, I just feel like it、um, it created an emotional rift, and you might not have known how the emotional rift、uh, started. You might not have known, you know. Uh, how they perceive you, they might not have known how you perceive them. You both were not very aware of each other's needs、uh, in an emotional way, and they, more than anything, were not really aware that you needed them, that you needed the constant reassurance. You don't ask for it. You don't need it on a regular basis, but when you need it. They were not there. Okay, so the bottom line is, when you needed them for something, this person was not there, and I feel like it created a situation where you tell yourself, you know, they're never around anyways. I don't need them. I can do it on my own. I can forge ahead. Um, they're only going to slow me down, and so I feel like you know, through those periods of disappointment when you you were dealing with this person, I feel like it toughened your skin. You know, it 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 made you a little bit callous, and it made you a little bit like、uh, I don't need them. I don't need anybody. I I can do this on my own, and so. You embody that energy. So, if this person is still in your life, you're coming to the realization that you know what they have never been around. Either it was subconscious on their end, like choosing not to be around, or either they didn't realize how important it was to me that they're around. And once again, you are not a needy sign, okay? You are not somebody who constantly wants attention and who constantly wants reassurance. But when you need that reassurance, it means a lot to you that the other person was there, but for whatever reason they were not there. And I feel like you're coming to terms with that fact, and you're coming to to terms with the fact that they were not around in the past. Who am I、uh, kidding? Who am I? You know, I, I need to to kind of accept this at face value, and I just need to accept this person at face value that I cannot rely on them. 
that I need to forge my own path, okay? So I feel like this is, you know, a very significant relationship for many of you within the past five years. Um, I feel for many of you, you might have like really jumped into this before you knew uh, the other person really well, okay? I, I feel like there was definitely lack of information here. There was definitely lack of like, um, expectations you know being uh, both parties were not very clear with expectations and then I feel like there was you know uh, a lot of passion a lot of energy a lot of kinetic energy and you both found yourself kind of wrapped up in each other and and, and kind of um, it's like a whirlwind romance and it, it took over it, there was a lot of infatuation but once again this is like not seeing the person truly for who they are falling in love with somebody that it's like you know being in love with the idea of being in love or being in love with the, the vision of what you thought the other person would be without knowing all the full information and so you're looking back now at this situation with in hindsight you know uh with clarity with 2020 vision and you're starting to see it for what it is and I feel like if this, for many of you, you've come to terms with the fact that if this doesn't work out, if, you know, they're, they're leaving my life, I'm okay with that. So once again, this sense of acceptance, this sense of peace, this sense of I'm okay on my own. I can make it on my own and I will be fine. I'm not going to get my, let myself get disappointed again. And I'm really, truly seeing this person for who they are. Okay. So. For many of you, um, I'm, I'm hearing, you know, like the, the mal-aligned expectations, okay? So if this is, for example, um, this is not a person, but like if it's a job situation for the past few years, um, I feel like you were kind of like your, your, your professional life and your career life meander, okay? It's like, let me just dabble uh, over here and see if this is a good fit. Let me dabble over there and see if that works out better. So I feel like it, it was, you know, jack of all trades, okay? Like trying to figure out your niche, trying to figure out where you fit in, trying to figure out what you're good at and trying to figure out where you excel and what brings you emotional happiness. And I feel like for you, uh, variety is the spice of life. You know, you, you, you enjoy having multiple projects going on at the same time you enjoy like doing this but also like having a main job but also like a side game you enjoy juggling things you enjoy having multiple avenues of creative expression so for many of you I feel like you know you're not stuck in just one job you have a job you have multiple hobbies you have friends you have like so many avenues for your creative expression and as a result of that, you feel like one job can never uh, fully emotionally satisfy you. For others of you, you feel like a regular nine to five job will never ever be in your future because it's not exciting enough. And then for others, you feel like one relationship partner will never be enough for you because you don't want things to be stagnant so there is a, a has been a major fear here of committing yourself a major fear here about you know letting life stagnate um being stuck in one situation one job one one circumstance one relationship and so i do feel like you were aware of, um, and I do sense for many of you, this might have been the past three years, you're aware of how your inability to commit or your, your fear of commitment has really gotten in the way of, you know, progress, okay? Or even stability in your own life. And I have here the Two of Pentacles, and this is, you know, pretty much that juggling act, okay? Having multiple things on your plate, having multiple projects, having multiple avenues of creative expression that really makes life very dynamic and exciting and interesting. But it can also create a state of anxiety. So just look at, um, look at this creature. And what I'm sensing is too much of it can be a little bit exhausting to maintain. Too much of it can give us that sense of instability. Look at how his feet is off the ground, okay? 
he's always dashing to the next thing. He's always looking around. He's always like scanning the horizon for new opportunities and think about thinking about where the grass is greener. So being this jack of all trades, I feel like, you know, the trade off is that it brings about the sense of instability where you don't know something truly deeply where you don't invest the time and the energy and the resources to build something, one solid thing from the ground up. And I feel for many of you, we have here the judgment card. And this is kind of like that reckoning, that realization, being awakened to how this lack of commitment from your end could also be very detrimental to your own emotional stability and it can be detrimental to your, your the, the ways in which you can really enjoy your life and feel fulfilled, okay? Because once again, like I said, um, you know, I do believe in like past life and reincarnation and things like that. And I feel like our soul's purpose in each lifetime is about mastering a lesson, mastering a skill, being very, very good at something, knowing something inside and out and being able to to master that and once we master that we have conquered pretty much our destiny and so those lessons don't repeat and then once we master something we can take those skills to bring it to a next work environment to bring it to a next life to bring it to a next situation and um, we will be able to handle life with a lot more ease and grace because we have mastered these lessons and so you're starting to see now that, you know, there's honor and, and, and there's um, a tremendous sense of pride that can come about as a result of doing something really, really, really well. No longer juggling, but mastering something and being very good at something and being kind of like an expert in your field where you know something inside and out. And then I also feel it can... Um, uh, bleed into the relationship aspect where you're just like um, I'm done with you know um, the the whole spiel the, the whole dating uh, situation the whole finding somebody and then getting bored of them a few months later and you're setting for or you're setting your intentions and looking for something that is a little bit more authentic and a little bit more real and a deeper much deeper emotional connection because like i said this is a relationship where you did not know the other person very well you jumped into a situation thinking that emotions and and all of that and excitement should be enough to propel the relationship forward but then you're starting to realize that you know it was really lacking in uh emotional connection emotional connectedness and um emotional fulfillment pretty much okay so we have here a bunch of lessons and a bunch of self-realizations things that you are finding out about yourself, things that you are coming term to terms with from your past, things that you have, your, your eyes have been open to, okay? And so this is where you were, and I feel like you're still thinking about this heavily. How could I rush into a situation so strongly? Um, people were warning you, I feel, you know, Seven of Swords here. This is about, you know, all the, uh, the, the, the things in your external environment, family, friends, co-workers, um, confidants, colleagues, whoever it is that you really respect their, um, that, that whose, whose opinions and, and, and um, point of view you really respect. I feel like they told you um, about a specific course of action and I feel like they were giving you advice, they were telling you or trying to steer you in a specific direction. And you know, as independent as you are, Aquarius, I feel that you beat to the uh, you, you 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 walk to the beat of your own drums, and I feel that you like to find out things, you like to experience things, you like to be in the driver's seat in your own life, and I feel like you were not listening. Okay, you needed to experience these things. And so they did happen for a reason, for you to figure out what works for you, for you to be nimble enough and, and, and to be, you know, 
smart enough to figure out, you know what, I need to change the course of action because this is not working down, out for me, or I need to really slow this down because I feel like I don't know the other person, or I need to really invest my time and be patient so that I can delve deep and really master something. So there was a lot of like periods with uh, in time within the past five years where you had warning signs, where you were given, you know, advice and and to either change a course of action or to do something a specific way. And I feel that the people that really cared about you, they know, they, they truly know you inside and out. They know how stubborn you can be. And I feel like the people that really cared about you, they did not want to infringe upon your free will. They didn't want to impose their ideas and whatever they thought you should do. They cared about you enough to kind of like, you know, take a, a, a loving detachment stance and not give you the information that they think you should know. And I feel like a lot of it was, you know, this, this is your journey. They didn't want to interfere. And I also felt like, you were not asking the right people for advice, for their honest assessment. And I also feel like no matter what and who is telling you the information, you wanted to figure out and you wanted to experience things. So the advice, the guidance, the, um, you know, whatever they wanted to say, it would have fallen on deaf ears, okay? So what I'm saying here is, don't beat yourself over this because this is something that you need to experience. This is something that you needed to live. And this is something that you needed to, you know, figure out for yourself. Now, we are emerging into, you know, the, the um, Saturn transit. And Saturn just uh, left the, the previous sign, which is Capricorn, your neighbors, and Saturn is moving into the sign of Aquarius, and it's going to be there for the next three years, okay, two and a half, three years. And um, the month of March and April, we're going to be feeling this heaviness, and the heaviness is about, um, you know, really thinking about these important decisions in our lives. Like, I'm talking big, large, long-term affecting important decisions, okay? It's not just, what am I going to eat for lunch tomorrow? These are like long-term planning that we need to do. Where do we want to be for the next five years? Where do we want to live? Who do we want to be with? Uh, what career track? Are we going to pursue so these are like big important life decisions that are kind of laid out in front of you and you you need to know where you have been and what you've learned from them so that you can figure out where you want to go and so this sense of nostalgia this sense of like you know walking down memory lane thinking about the past as well as uh, thinking about you know what we did in the past how that transpired how that played out whether or not it was the right thing to do all of these important decisions or, or all of these important reflections um, are required because you're now in a new phase and you really need to be more serious about the decisions that you make moving into the future because they have long-term ramifications in your life and I feel like they are going to weigh heavily in either making your future incredibly prosperous and happy or they might, you know, create a lot of obstacles in your life. So this is an important month because this whole process about reflecting on the past thinking about things that transpired in the past, how we could have done things differently, how we could have, you know, uh, not idealized people and situations, and how we could be a little bit better, like a, a little bit more discerning about what and who is, is right for us and what we should need to pursue in order to be happy. So I definitely feel there is a desire from your end about, you know, truly, uh, seeking emotionally um, stable people, okay? You're naturally drawn to people who are a little bit more on the eccentric end, who are a little bit weird and quirky and unique, but these people might not entirely be um, stable, and I feel like they're exciting, but they have never filled your emotional needs. 
And so you're aiming for har more harmony, for more of an emotional connection, for that sense of emotional connectedness in, in your surrounding and in the people that you interact with. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's more about quality over quantity. You're no longer bouncing around trying to, you know, have myriads of partners and trying to figure out where you stand and, and what works for you. You're done with the experimentation. You know exactly who you want to be with and you know exactly what you're seeking in a relationship partner. So once you are aware of what you really want that's when the partner shows up okay so i feel like in this phase in your life and especially for the next cycle of your life you're seeking more emotional fulfillment and you want a partner that is uh your equal that is your match that will reciprocate in an emotional way that will be emotionally available to you that will be dependable and that will kind of like uh, be able to know what you need without you having to express yourself. So I feel like you're no longer um, conflicted about this, okay? The other thing that is coming through as well is I feel like for many of you, you're thinking heavily about your finances, okay? So this is here, the Four of Pentacles, and the Four of Pentacles is all about building a foundation. It's about clinging on to, you know, the, the earthly possession so that we can figure out and have a strategy and have a game plan as to how we can make our money work for for us i feel like for the past two months january and february of 2020 money has been kind of like slipping your fingers it's like grasping at sand and the the grains of sand just slip through the cracks in your your hands okay so i have two cards here that indicates you know financial fluctuation things coming and going and um, potentially for many of you it's like you're scattering your energy you're doing a lot of different projects but I feel like these projects were not yielding whatever it was that you were expecting and then for others of you I see like a lot of overspending a lot of unintended expenditures a lot of like you were counting on having this much money but then something happened and then you're paid less or you thought this amount would come in, but for whatever reason, a smaller amount came in or none at all. So I feel like there's a lot of financial reassessment here and a lot of financial planning that needs to happen for the next phase in your life because I feel like for many of you, this is important. For many of you, this is like, you know, you, you have several things and, and responsibilities, real life responsibilities to take care of. And so you need to kind of like, sit down with you know your excel spreadsheet your ledger your bank accounts your statements to figure out how much it is that you're really bringing home and how much you're spending so that you can kind of like you know balance out the checkbook okay so i do feel a lot more thinking and and um your mind is crunching numbers as it relates to your financial resources because you understand how important that is okay and then I also feel as well, so these two cards are related. We have here the Four of Pentacles and the High Priestess. And what I'm getting here is uh, there is a situation where you're wanting a, um, a specific outcome very, very, very badly, okay? Um, look at how tightly she's holding on to that lobster to her chest. This is like a very strong emotional decision that you are making. And Aquarius, you are not a very emotional sign. You are a very rational sign. You think with your head and you don't think with your heart. But I feel like there is a situation here. And I feel like for many of you, it is in regards to a relationship partner. Okay. Uh, appearing with the two of cups it is an emotional connection that you feel is your kindred your one and only this is the person that you feel a very strong magnetic attraction and pull and a soul connection with and i feel for many of you um you have a really hard time letting it go it, it's still very much this person is still very much in your thoughts in your mind in your heart and I feel like the, 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 the feelings associated with this person, it can feel very heavy. It can feel a little bit tragic. It can feel a little bit sad, okay? Um, it's a love connection. Two of Cups, High Priestess is a love connection. And I do sense like um, you're having trouble letting it go. You're having trouble thinking 
it. it it's it's like in your mind, the connection is very strong, right? And you're just like, if I feel this way, then why isn't you know what? Why aren't the results showing in the real world? If my emotions tell me that this is the one, why isn't the reality reflecting that? Why aren't they aware of that? Why aren't、uh, circumstances conspiring to bring us together? And I so I feel like this is a, an emotional connection that can bring with it like prickly thorns. You know, it can be a little bit heavy. It can feel a little bit tragic. I'm getting tragedy for for some reason, and I, I feel like you know it's a situation where there might be third parties involved. For example, where the other person might already be in a relationship, or you know if you're in a relationship and you're attracted to somebody outside of that relationship, then I feel like there's some kind of like a, a star cross romance or star cross lovers where your paths are not really aligned in a way that will allow the relationship to kind of like work naturally. I also feel like one of the reasons why you are feeling this heavy, really heavy weight in your heart is energetically the other person is not willing to let you go. Okay. Four of Pentacles. This is the miser. This is cling, clinging on to a situation, and I feel like this is an emotional, spiritual connection where the other person is also not able to let you go. So they're feeling the same way that you are feeling. They're feeling this weight on their heart. They're feeling the the restrictions of their external environment. Either their culture, their belief system, their family, their obligations, their financial resources, whatever it is, there's a lot of things weighing on them. That's it's like creating these shackles, all right? These gold shackles, earthly possessions, wealth, money, power, prestige, whatever it is. It's、uh, disallowing them from breaking free from these shackles to come towards you. And so I'm sensing that's why it's a little bit tragic because、um, these are earthly responsibilities that the other person cannot get right, cannot extract themselves extract themselves from in order to be with you. And so you don't really have a choice here but to you know try to move from it. And you're wondering why is it so hard? Why am I having so much difficulty moving away from this? And it's because energetically they're clinging on to you. They're clinging on to this connection.、Um, and then I'm also feeling as well for many of you,、um, somebody really wants to be with you, and yet they're not able to to unshackle themselves from these restrictions in order to move towards you. They really want to, Aquarius. I feel that they really want to. They recognize that this is a True, real love connection here. Two of Cups is a really big deal when it comes to love and relationship because it is about compatibility. It's about you know not only loving another person but really liking the other person, really enjoying their company, really wanting the best for them. Really like、um, when you're with the other person, the two of you feel very calm and very at. Peace. Okay, it's a hard. It's um. It's not something that you encounter in every person. It indicates to me kind of like a soul connection, a soul contract, or even a person that you might have had many different reincarnations、um, in the past. And so you feel comfortable and familiar when you're around each other. It's like your soul recognizes each other, and. It feels very at peace, and I feel like you've never felt this sense of peace with another person. And there's something here where the other person really does want to come towards you, and、um, I feel like they have restrictions that are shackling them, and they're not able to break away from it in order to be with you. And a lot of it is finance related. I feel like they're very concerned about their finances. They're very concerned about their what they have and what they don't, and they're very concerned about you know. It's like somebody who's really afraid of having the the rug ripped out from under them, 
And let's just be honest, Aquarius, um, you're very unpredictable, okay? And so I feel like they're looking at you and, and they still think of, like, you know, deep down you're a fixed sign. You are very uh, reliable, but they also see that, that lightning streak in you where it can be really abrupt and it can be very uh, difficult to understand. It can come out of the blue and it can be very unpredictable. And so they're not really sure. Uh, which Aquarius they're gonna get they're not really sure you know at the end of the day am I getting the stable Aquarius or the one that is unpredictable and so I feel like you know there there are a lot of financial maneuvering and decisions that they have to make in order to be with you and I feel like they want to but there's a lot of fear associated with it okay because the four of pentacles once again this is a card about self-protection okay not letting people in and especially hanging on very very tightly to our earthly possessions and out of fear out of you know fear of losing it all out of um lack of uncertainty is what i'm feeling and i do sense for many of you um if you are, you know, thinking about like um, your financial future, I do sense that you are going to be dipping into different projects, having a main job and a side gig, or having multiple side gigs in order to piece together a nine to five job or to piece together enough money. So I do feel that the financial situation, it is going to alleviate if you are concerned about that, okay? So at the end of the reading, what we have here is the Judgment card and the Two of Pentacles. I feel like for many of you, where you are right now financially, it's um, it's stable and it's, it's pretty good, okay, with the Two of Pentacles here. But there might be something that is calling out to you, that is really speaking out to you, and that is kind of like luring you in, okay? So I feel like you're trying to figure out, you know, do I take this one or do I take the other one? Do I stay here with this job or do I take something else? And there is going to be news and communication and messages coming through as it relates to a major financial uh, decision. It could be work related, it could be job related, it could be, you know, uh, a new career path even for many of you. So I feel like you're really listening to your intuition and uh, many of you, I feel, are even willing to take take a major major uh, salary cut in order to do something that uh, makes you happier many of you are even willing to you know relocate in order to do something that makes you a lot more emotionally fulfilled many of you are no longer chasing that financial stability um, if you your heart is not in it and then I also feel for many of you you're also on the opposite end of the spectrum where you're just like, I don't care about the ideals anymore. I need to really buckle down and get serious about my financial future. So that means you might even take a job, even if you're not 100% um, happy with it. So I feel like, you know, you both are like, for a lot of Aquarius, you might be on opposite ends of the spectrum where you're a lot more concerned about money and you're no longer idealistic. I don't want to take these, um, you know, um, feel good jobs if they're not bringing me that financial stability and so you might compromise or sacrifice the fi the emotional fulfillment doing a job that you love for doing something that will bring a lot more financial uh, resources okay so I definitely feel like there is a turnaround here in the ways in which you're looking at life and a lot of it has to, it's like realization and epiphanies and, and awakening and um, being shown, you know, things from the past wherein you start to understand the past and you started to understand the decisions and the choices that you've made in the past. And coming into present day, you're coming to terms with how those decisions have pan out for you. Whether or not they worked, whether or not you should replicate those decisions, whether or not you need to change your strategy, or whether or not, you know, those decisions did not work and why they did not work. A lot of it, I feel, is kind of like this impulsive jump in, ask questions later, and you might have realized that it might not have worked out for you. And then I also feel there are instances where you went on blind faith. You listened to your heart and things worked out really well. And you're starting to realize that, you know, that worked out well for me because 
I listen to my higher self. Okay, so I feel like there's a lot of awakening, awareness, reflection, and just、um, coming to to this state of peace about your life. Okay, so once again,、uh, let me talk a little bit about that lotus flower because I feel like that's what the star is really about. It's about renewal. It's about healing. It's about coming into this state of calmness, where you're recognizing your true path. You're recognizing who is dotted along the way in your path in life, and who is kind of like helping you along the way, and who's meant for you to bring forward with. Into your future, as well as what job, what career, what mindset, what decisions are meant to be carried on with into the future. Okay, so Aquarius, I hope I haven't lost you guys, and I hope this reading finds you well. I hope that it,、um, you know, provides whatever clarity and information and answers that you need. Okay, I hope that it is relevant to what you're dealing with, so that you can find a path forward. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and、um, I hope you have had a very happy birthday time so far.、Um, so, for those who are interested in reading, I have mentioned in all of my videos,、um, and I'm still getting emails. I'm no longer doing private readings. I don't have the time. I cannot.、Um, you know, I have a, a, a full time job, and I'm also doing this on the side because I enjoy it, and I really don't have the time for、uh, personal readings. So I apologize. If you are interested in a reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic. Her name is Bridget, and she's based out of California. I highly recommend that you get a reading with her. And、uh, for those who are interested in art and you know supporting local artists, I do have a link in the description box below for an artist based out of California. She has some、uh, amazing artwork. And、um, if you want to you know check out her website, make a purchase, and things like that, support your local artists. And I、um, the the drawings are、uh, or, I'm sorry the paintings are really really nice. Okay. So those links are in the description box below. I will leave you at that. Have a very wonderful rest of February and enjoy your March 2020. And、uh, I wish you all the best. Okay, take care.